made clear that Mike Flynn lied to them. So Mike Flynn just pled guilty to a charge of lying to the FBI. What did he lie to the FBI about? Apparently, he lied to the FBI because he had been speaking with the Russian ambassador, Sergei Kislyak, in order to convince Kislyak to lay off of backlash against the United States after the Obama administration in its waning days as retaliation for supposed Russian election interference put new sanctions on the Russians. And you recall that Putin didn't respond to that, and there was speculation that was because Flynn had reached out to Putin and told him, don't do it, things are going to change come January 20th. I said at the time, I don't see what is particularly wrong with that. He was a transition official. It was already pretty clear he was going to be part of the administration. There's no real violation of law there, so what's the big deal? The fact, though, that he was allowed to plead on only the charge with regard to lying to the FBI suggests to me that he is about to flip on the Trump administration, and that suspicion has now been confirmed. The reason I say that this is pretty clearly a plea deal that minimizes what Flynn did is because there have been reports coming out of the Mueller probe that they were investigating Flynn for having made a deal with the Turkish government to kidnap a, a, a guy who's a Turkish dissenter from, from the United States and send him back to Turkey. They've been paid hundreds of thousands of dollars by the Turkish government. In other words, it looks like there were more serious charges on the table, and in exchange for those charges going away, Flynn took this much lesser charge in order to get this thing over with. So according to ABC News, here's what they are saying. They are now saying that Flynn had resisted flipping on other members of the administration for months, given his close ties with the Trump administration, but he apparently felt abandoned by the administration in recent weeks thanks to mounting legal debts and plans to sell his house to help defray costs, according to ABC News. This is one of the big problems, seriously, one of the big problems with the uh, with, with special counsel investigations, everyone is forced to lawyer up. Lawyers are incredibly expensive. If you are just a normal person, you can't afford the lawyering up that it costs to fight people like Robert Mueller. And there was no one there to pick up the cost for Mike Flynn. So in order to defray those costs, he's apparently cutting a deal with the with the Mueller investigation. Brian Ross on ABC News Special Report is reporting that Flynn has promised, quote, full cooperation to the Mueller team and is prepared to testify that as a candidate, Donald Trump, quote, directed him to make contact with the Russians. Now, this, the, the people on the left are going nuts. Clearly, we're almost there. We're almost there, gang. This means that Mike Flynn is going to testify that Donald Trump told him to coordinate campaign activities with the Russians, and that's why, they're, that's why Hillary Clinton lost the election. That is not clear by any stretch of the imagination. There is lots of coordination between the Hillary Clinton team, for example, and we know members of the Ukrainian government. The idea that members of campaigns don't talk to foreign officials is just not true. So it's quite possible that Trump told Flynn, I want you to go talk to Putin, talk to him about what their priorities are, what our priorities are if I become president of the United States. None of that is illegal. None of that is illegal. The only thing that would be illegal is presumably if there was actually a conspiracy, an exchange of information that would be designed to subvert the United States election, and there are actual conspiracy laws, then you'd have to see if they violate them legally, and that, that, that's a little bit... Difficult to prove. Collusion is not a crime. In other words, even if collusion occurred, that might be grounds for the political crime of impeachment that would, that would require impeachment, but it's not grounds for any actual crime that has been committed. Collusion is not a crime. There is no statute on collusion. It's a vague term of art. So this does not get all the way toward proving anything about Trump. We still have to see what Flynn has to say. Now, there are two possibilities here. One is that Flynn is actually going to say some stuff that's really damaging about the president. In favor of the, this possibility, is the, is the reality that Mueller cut a deal with Flynn that basically let Flynn almost entirely off the hook for all of these other charges. So why would you cut such a, a deal that was generous to Flynn? Because Flynn's about to give you a bunch of good stuff. Right? Think of your godfather. Right? Frank Pantangeli is going to get off the hook so long as he testifies against Michael Corleone. Okay? The, the, the reason that you're going to downgrade charges is because you're trying to get Flynn to actually give you valuable information. If you don't believe Flynn has valuable information, you don't cut a deal with him at all. You just send him to jail. So that's cutting in favor of that. There's also the possibility, however, that the special counsel is charging Flynn on the lying to the FBI charge because what he is hoping is that now he's going to be able to go after other members of the Trump administration for the same thing. That there will be a sort of domino effect that he's sort of fishing. That what he's doing here is he's going to nail Flynn on the lying to the FBI charge, get him to plead out on that, and then he, they're going to go back and talk to some other folks who have talked to the FBI, I think in the administration that includes, uh, I think Kushner has talked to the FBI, I think there, there are several other members of the administration who have talked to the FBI, the possibility exists that they will try to have Flynn testify against those people and then try and get those people on charges of lying to the FBI and try and flip this upward, right? create a domino effect, and maybe one of those people flips on the president and finally spills the beans about the president. But that is not the same thing as Flynn himself is directly going to implicate the president in any sort of criminal activity. So it's a little early for all of the speculation that's going on. It is not clear by any stretch of the imagination that all of this is uh, that, that all of this is is going to bring down the president of the United States. There is a lot of 
th- th- there's a lot of, I, I think, unbased speculation from both sides. People on the right going, this is a big nothing, right? They didn't charge him with anything. And people on the left going, they charged him with something. We're about to get Trump. President Pence is coming. I don't know that any of this is, uh, is going to be true. So we just don't know enough yet. We do know that something more is happening in the investigation than we thought was happening yesterday. Reuters, by the way, ABC is saying that candidate Trump ordered him to make contact with the Russians. That's what ABC is reporting. Reuters is reporting that Flynn is saying that the transition team ordered him to make contact with the Russians. If it's the transition team, that has nothing to do with the campaign. So it's hard even to imagine what the crime would be at that point. The transition team ordering Flynn to talk with the Russians. Like, who cares? Unless we're just going to round up a bunch of people unjustly. And this is something the special counsels have done in the past. You recall that it was special counsel, I believe it was Patrick Fitzgerald, who went after Scooter Libby. Scooter Libby was working for the president of the United States. He's an American lawyer, former, former advisor to VP Dick Cheney. And you recall that he actually ended up in jail and he was pardoned by President Trump, or his sentence was commuted more specifically by President Bush because Scooter Libby had apparently fibbed to the FBI, but there was no underlying crimes. They got Scooter Libby for fibbing to the FBI but they, or obstruction of justice, but he had not actually done anything wrong. There was no underlying crime. Nothing criminal had taken place. He hadn't done it. Nobody in the administration had done it. Basically, remember, that was about Valerie Plame. The situation in that particular case was that Valerie Plame was, in under, was a covert CIA agent. She was in Washington. She was not really, like, in the field. And there was a leak about her identity after Joe Wilson, her husband, suggested that the Bush administration had lied about yellow cake from Niger being sold to the Iraqi regime. And, uh, and the person who actually ended up doing it, I believe, was Richard Armitage. Uh, that, that was the, the person who had ended up leaking it was, was not, in fact, Scooter Libby. It was Richard Armitage. But Libby had apparently fibbed to the FBI in the process of the investigation, and they decided to go after Libby instead. It was really a bunch of nonsense. They went after him just because they felt like going after him. Uh, and that's why President Bush ended up commuting his sentence. He really should have pardoned him. In, in this particular case, it could be something very similar. We just don't know at this point. So anybody who's telling you it's all over, we know what the story is, Trump is going down, don't believe them at this point. There's just not enough information on that yet uh, for that to be the case. We don't know what Mike Flynn is going to tell the, the FBI, what he has told the FBI at this point. So we're going to find out. We're going to find out. Uh, by the way, it is worth noting also... The White House says that they have no comment on this at this point, which is the proper stance in the middle of a legal proceeding. The last thing you want to do is start going out and mouthing off. Uh, Mike Flynn had made comments in 2016. It's going to get played all over the news today that if he did a tenth of what Hillary Clinton had done, he would be in jail today. Um, you know, th- there's a real possibility that that is that that is true, by the way, that he really did not do much here uh, and that he could end up in jail anyway, just because this is the way that political prosecutions go. We're saying that because if I... A guy who knows this business, if I did a tenth, a tenth of what she did, I would be in jail today. So, crooked Hillary Clinton, leave this race now. So I'm not saying it's a political prosecution. I don't know. You don't know. Nobody knows. So don't buy all the speculation that's going on today. It's time to hold judgment in abeyance until you actually have more information. Okay, so that is big story number one. Big story number two. Begin with the Russia investigation. Chief Intelligence Correspondent Catherine Harridge is at the D.C. District Court tonight with the latest. Good evening, Catherine. Right, General Flynn is now required to fully cooperate, and that raises the stakes for President Trump, his son-in-law Jared Kushner, and other members of his inner circle. After 33 years of military service, including five years in combat, retired general and former National Security Advisor Mike Flynn stood composed before a federal judge and pled guilty to a felony lying to the FBI. Democrats praised the plea as a milestone. There is broader exposure of other people uh, within the transition team and possibly within the administration. So I don't think we've seen the end of this. With his wife in the front row, Flynn told the judge he willingly and knowingly waived his right to a trial by his peers. And as part of the deal, Flynn will fully cooperate with special counsel Robert Mueller's Russia investigation. Four days after the inauguration, newly unsealed court records show Flynn sat down with FBI agents and during the interview misled them about his contact with Russian ambassador Sergei Kislyak. Legal experts said the plea deal may be a stepping stone to targets inside the White House. It turns up the pressure on other individuals. It causes people in the White House to wonder what's coming next, who's going to go next. And I think all of that is designed to get cooperation from these people and for Mueller to send a signal to the White House that he's here playing hardball. 
Republicans disagreed. I've seen no evidence at all indicating that there's any connection between General Flynn and the president, anything involving Russian collusion. In a statement, Flynn said it has been extraordinarily painful to endure months of false allegations of treason and other outrageous acts. Flynn said what he did was wrong, and through his faith, he would set things right. By pleading, uh, he's admitted uh, the falsity of it, the uh, materiality of it, and the intent to deceive. That's different from what Director Comey told uh, us on HIPSI um, earlier this year. A source close to the matter tells Fox News that in late spring, then FBI Director James Comey told Congress in closed door testimony his agents concluded Flynn had not deliberately misled them about the Russia contacts. Rather, Flynn was confused about the timeline and overwhelmed by a chaotic transition. On Twitter, Comey posted part of a Bible verse about justice. A source close to Flynn tells Fox News that he's in the process of selling a house to help pay back legal bills. And it was the financial and emotional pressure that helped crystallize his decision to cut a deal and cooperate in order to avoid several more years of crippling litigation, Brett. Catherine, thank you.